Hello everyone, I'm Elder Thurgood and today I'd like to share another story from the Old Testament. This one is about the death of King Saul, the first king in Israel, who was once a mighty and righteous man. But King Saul began to sin in his life and began to turn away from the Lord God. Saul was jealous of young David, the boy who slew Goliath, a hero of Israel. All the people chanted David's name and Saul was jealous of him. Saul went about trying to hunt David down, thinking of excuse after excuse to send raiding parties and assassinations after him. David evaded these attacks and preserved his life and fled into the country of the Philistines to hide from King Saul. During this time, the Philistines knew that David, the greatest general of Israel, was not with King Saul. So they assembled all of their armies, every Philistine man who had a grudge against Israel, to launch an attack on the nation. King Saul would have to fight this army with himself and his own generals, not with the help of the hero King David. Saul was praying. He knew he couldn't win this battle without the Lord's guidance, but he was not living a life worthy of the Lord's guidance. He was not keeping his covenants or the commandments of the Lord. And the Lord, as such, was silent to him, giving him no answer to his prayers. David was, Saul was mad. He searched for an answer. He wanted his answer if the Lord would be with him. How could he win this battle, which seemed so impossible with the size of the army of the Philistines? So he decided to seek out an answer through other means. Means unapproved by God. He set out looking for a woman with a familiar spirit, or in other words, looking for a witch. There was one found in the land of Endor. Saul had originally settled a proclamation that all the witches should be killed, but now he wanted her help. So in disguise, he took some men and went to see the witch of Endor. At this time, everyone in Israel knew that David had become an enemy to Saul, and that the army of the Philistines was coming upon them, and that Saul was going mad. Saul went to the witch of Endor and asked her to channel the spirit of the prophet Samuel. At first, the witch was surprised. She says, you know that the king has ordered that all the witches should be killed, not immediately recognizing him in disguise. Saul swore, saying that as the Lord liveth, no harm shall come upon you for this. The witch agreed to channel the spirit of the dead prophet. She began speaking with the voice of an old man saying that she saw a spirit of a man. Saul realized, oh, that must be Saul, Samuel. Channel that spirit. So she began speaking as if she were Samuel, saying that for his sins, Saul and all of his children would be massacred in the battle against the Philistines. Saul was troubled and worried. He was so devastated, he knew that he didn't stand a chance. So as he went to battle, he was thinking so much about this prophecy from the dead prophet that he's unable to properly lead his armies or focus on combat and is slain along with all of his sons, as the witch prophesied. Many people might wonder what the doctrine is behind this. How could a witch channel the spirit of a righteous man in paradise? Well, she probably didn't. There are many theories of what might have happened. Some say that the witch of Endor might have been channeling an evil spirit pretending to be Samuel. Others say she might not have been channeling anything at all. After all, everyone knew that David was an enemy to Saul. The witch could have known Saul was the man when he promised her that no harm would come upon her. Who other than the king would have made such a promise? She could have declared Sam that Saul would have perished in the battle in order to trouble his mind with this. Saul, Saul only died because he was so busy thinking about the prophecy. It was a self-fulfilling prophecy. And as such, Saul brought about his own destruction by turning away from the Lord and casting aside his covenants and the Lord's commandments. He brought about his own death and the death of his children. 